Hi, everybody. This is my second try at this. Uh, I was having a little issue with two microphones uh, going back and forth, and I was getting a lot of echo. So hopefully this time it'll actually work out. Uh, I'm sharing my screen with a tablet uh, that I'm using with a stylus. Here's my stylus pen. I don't know if you can see it or not. I'll put it in front of my face. There we go. Uh, so I've got the stylus pen. Um, I'm using a Galaxy Tab uh, um, a tablet. Hopefully, uh, if, if you are able to write on your screen, that'll work out great. If not, please copy these down and try the multiplications yourself. Um, I'm going to have you do this using your normal method. Uh, that would be the algorithm that you learned to multiply these together. And then we're going to talk about how to multiply these special pairs using a little shortcut that you will be able to multiply them in your head. So to start out, go ahead and copy these down and multiply them normally. That would be for this first problem here. Whoops, that's my pen. For this first problem, I've got 52 times 58, and I'm gonna multiply the eight times the two, which is 16. I've got a one that I'm carrying. Eight times five is 40, and the one makes 41. I put a zero to hold the place, and then the five times two is 10. Again, I'm carrying a one. Five times five is 25, plus one is 26. And then I add all my digits together, that six and one and zero, and carry the one. I get 3,016. Now that's the multiplication algorithm that you all learned as kids. Now what I want to do today is show you a little shortcut that you can use for this. And before we get into the shortcut, I think it's a good idea to go ahead and multiply these uh, out the way you normally would. And then I'm going to go through and show you how to do it another way. So pause the video and actually try it yourself. Okay, let's see if you did it. Um, now, if you multiplied these together, uh, the second one right here, you should have gotten 1225. For this one, you should have gotten 624. And for this last one here, uh, you should have gotten 7221. Now, you'll notice the way I'm, I'm saying this uh, should give you some clues as to what I'm actually doing. So here's the, here's the technique we're going to use. I'm not going to do this. Uh, First of all, before we, before we get into the special technique, let's go ahead and look at what makes these pairs special. Uh, take a look at them and see if you can tell what makes these all alike. They, they have two things in common. The ten, notice that the, hopefully, if, if you read the comments, you already know, the tens digits are the same. Notice that this is 52 times 58, 35 times 35, and then 20, this one, 24 times 26, and this one is 83 times 87. And you'll notice the ones digits are different, but that they also have something in common. Uh, two and eight adds up to 10, five and five has a sum of 10, four and six has a sum of 10, and three and seven has a sum of 10. So those are called conjugates. When you have multiplications that look like this, there is a shortcut that you can use. Now, today's lesson really isn't about the shortcut. It's about how to learn to do something. Now, there's three ways that you can go about learning uh, today's lesson. You can watch me do all 12 of these, and you'll think, oh, I, I can do this myself. And when you go to try it yourself, you're not going to be able to. The second method is to, to do what I'm going to ask you to do, which is to pause the video, try it yourself, and try out the technique on the next four and then the last four. And there's a chance that you'll remember how to do it tomorrow, maybe, but you won't really understand it. The third method, and this is the one that is sometimes called the Feynman technique, this is to share what you're learning with someone else. And it's extremely powerful method for learning anything. And that's what this lesson is really all about. So let's get into how to do this. Um, if your tens digits are the same and your ones digits have a sum of 10, they're conjugates, then you can add one to your first tens digit. That makes that six times five, which is 30, and two times eight is 16. That's it. 
Now, it doesn't seem like uh, that it could possibly work, but it works for all of these special cases. Three plus one makes four times three is 12, and five times five is 25. Two times three is six, and four times six is 24. And eight times nine, remember, we always have to go one bigger in the first tens digit that we're looking at. So eight times nine is 72, and three times seven is 21. Now this, again, this technique works, and it's going to seem like it's pretty easy, and you do need to practice a bit, but that's not the best way to learn. Let's take a look at another set of four. Here's our next set of four, and we're going to try multiplying these. Now this one is kind of a special case of the special case, and we want to watch out for that one times nine. Um, the reason is because the second multiplication uh, has to be in the tens and ones digits. So there's an extra little zero we have to add in there. For this one, we've got, uh, and try them yourself. Don't wait, for, don't wait for me to do them and just copy what I, or, or just watch me do them. That won't help you. What you have to do is try them yourself. Notice that they all follow the same pattern. They have all the tens digits are the same. The ones digits add up to 10. So I've got one more makes two times one and five times five. Four times three is 12 and four times six is 24. Six times seven, remember I'm bringing that one up there. Now one way I remember this technique is that my ones digits always have to add up to 10 and I think, oh, if I add two numbers together, I usually do a carry. So I, I kind of pretend like this is a carry. So seven times six is 42 and five times five is 24. And this last one, is the four times five, remember we have to add the one, four times five is 20, but then I need two digits, and since one times nine is nine, I have to write zero nine, just like when you write 2009 or 2006 and so on. So there's your technique. Remember, uh, you can try practicing it yourself, which I hope you'll do. Uh, this is our next, our, our next set, and uh, try it yourself. Pause it. You know how that works. You just tap the screen and pause the video. And then try it yourself. Don't wait for me. This first one is a little different. Uh, I think of this as having a 10 in my tens digits and another 10 in my tens digits. The tens digits are the same. The ones digits add up to 10. And we've got 10 times 11, which is 110, four times six is 24. Remember what I'm doing, I'm adding one to my first tens digit, that makes 11, times 10 is 110, and four times six is 24. One times two is two, three times seven is 21, two times three is six, but I have a zero nine, don't forget there's an extra little digit that has to be added in. And finally, do the last one yourself, for goodness sake. Four times five is 20, and five times five is 25. Now it might not seem like this is a very useful technique, but you'd be surprised at how often in mathematics this type of multiplication comes up. I'll, I'll just show you an example of when this, this happens. Um, <clears throat> shall I get a new, I'll get a new screen. Well, I wanna leave the screen up. So suppose I have a circle, that's supposed to be a circle, I probably could have drawn it using my tool, but. There we go. Uh, and it has a radius of 4.5 centimeters. And suppose I want to find the area and maybe the diameter. Now, uh, sorry, the area and the perimeter. Uh, the perimeter or the circumference is really easy. You just multiply the diameter times pi. The diameter is twice as big as the radius, and that's pretty easy, so it's nine. And so the circumference is nine pi. But if I want the area, I'm gonna write the formula. The area of a circle is pi r squared. And uh, I'm gonna write this out. Now, 
pi has a value of approximately 3.14, but that's not really what it is. Pi is a special constant that is only approximately equal to 3.14159926 and so on. This is an irrational number. Uh, it's actually called a transcendental number. It goes, this decimal goes forever, never repeats, um, never ends. It's, uh, it's very difficult to write as a decimal, obviously. But I can write the symbol, and I mean exactly what this number is. There it is right there. And the radius is 4.5 squared. Um, one of the things we're going to be doing in this course a lot is I'm going to go through a five-step problem-solving process. You'll notice that I wrote a diagram and that I labeled it. I have a formula. I substitute it inside parentheses, and now I'm going to simplify. Well, hopefully you noticed if 4.5 squared is the same as 4.5 times 4.5. You see where I changed this? This has two decimal places, so it's 20.25. times pi. And this is in centimeters squared. We always want to label our answer. So there's an application to how to use this special multiplication. Um, remember, don't just watch how to do something and don't just practice doing it. You need to pass it on to someone else. Some people have heard the biblical reference saying uh, that what you give away comes back to you tenfold. And this is quite literally true in education. What, you, what knowledge you give away comes back to you 10 times as powerfully and will last 10 times as long. So pass this on to three different people. For those of you in my class, your assignment for tonight is to actually teach this to each of your parents. I recommend that you do it individually. Uh, maybe try a sibling. If you're really in a pinch and you can't get anybody to uh, listen to your lesson, you can teach an, a pet. Um, I had, a, I had a, a college student once who would, every night when she would drive home, she would look at her steering wheel and pretend like it was a smiley face and teach her, 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 her car how to do the lesson. So it doesn't matter who you teach or whether they learn it or not. What matters is that you actually try to explain what you're teaching. And I hope you'll give it a try, and I'll see you back again. Bye.